What's going on? Huh? Did something happen? Did something bad happen at work or at home? Evan! Did something happen to Evan? Is he hurt or sick or missing? Is he really my grandson? Are you sure he's my flesh and blood? Yes, of course he is. Why would you even doubt that? He's your son's child, and he looks just like him. Oh, really? I wouldn't know because I'd never see him. Why are you sheltering him from me and the rest of the world? Your parenting practices are very questionable. You're keeping him away from me and from other people who could teach him valuable lessons and skills. I'm not sheltering him from anyone. Whenever we walk around the neighborhood, I make sure he says hello to all of our neighbors. I'm not trying to prevent you from seeing him or anything. We just went over to your house two weeks ago. You're exaggerating and being paranoid. That's not enough. He's going to know the people in his neighborhood better than he knows his own grandmother. You're being very inconsiderate. Think about how that looks for me. You're depriving him of a close bond with me and a sense of family and tradition. Mom, listen, we've discussed this before. Wanting to see your grandchild is one thing. It's totally different to want to see your grandson so you can force him to do what you want. You invited him over, saying you wanted to play, but you made him rearrange your living room with you. You tell everyone he's going to Harvard, so you force him to study instead of letting him play outside. It's no wonder he doesn't want to come over that much. You use him as a tool to fulfill your own agenda and to impress others. You don't let him have fun or be himself. You make him feel stressed and unhappy whenever he's with you. What are you saying? How dare you talk to your mother-in-law that way? Are you accusing me of being a bad grandmother and a bad person? How disrespectful and ungrateful of you. You should be thankful that I care about him and that I want the best for him. Trust me, I want Evan to have a good relationship with you. But that's not going to happen if you keep making him do things he doesn't want to do because you think it's right. I appreciate that you love him and that you have good intentions for him. But you need to understand that he's his own person and that he has his own dreams and preferences. Are you doubting my judgment? You're such a naive, foolish woman. I've been on this earth far longer than you have. I know what's best for him. You're really failing as a parent. I think you have a lot to fix about yourself before you can continue to raise your son. Yeah, okay, I'll get on that. Sure, whatever. I'll do that right away. By the way, when are you expecting your baby? James told me the news. You're having another child, right? Why did you keep it a secret from me? Why didn't you share this wonderful news with me as soon as you knew? Oh, my bad. We've been very busy and stressed since we learned about it. This is what I mean by your mistakes and flaws. You need to improve yourself before your second child is born and be a better mother and a better daughter-in-law. I'm warning you now. You better have a daughter this time or you'll face the consequences. What is that supposed to mean? I can't choose the gender of my baby. It's determined by nature and chance. I don't care about that. What if you have another rude and disobedient son like Evan? This world needs more females, not males who cause trouble and violence. And I'll be the one who decides what to call her. Don't you even think about arguing with me or defying me on this matter. Excuse me? You can't be serious. I've always dreamed of having a little girl of my own. It's not my fault that my marriage ended before I could have one. James is my only son and my only chance of having grandchildren. I suppose technically you are my daughter by marriage, but I don't think of you as my daughter at all. You're nothing like the daughter I wanted or imagined. Just give me this one small thing. Won't you let me fulfill my lifelong wish? So basically you're saying, shut up, I'm going to choose your daughter's name. Is that about right? Exactly, yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Wow, the parents of a child are the ones who name it. Have I made myself clear? A mother-in-law's authority is supreme. Everyone knows a daughter-in-law must obey whatever her mother-in-law demands. I won't tolerate any arguments or complaints from you. It's already settled. I'll be accompanying James when he comes to see you in the hospital, and I'll inform the doctors of the name I've selected for her. Let me know as soon as possible if you're having a son or a daughter. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're having a boy? Yes. 
I told you that I wanted you to have a girl. You're useless. I heard James was so disappointed like I was. Mom, I don't care if I have a boy or a girl. No matter which it is, I'll love them the same. I've never seen James like that before. He went into a rage and was screaming at the top of his lungs. He did that? Yes, he did. He was screaming, Why isn't it a girl? Do something, you pathetic excuse for a doctor. He grabbed the doctor by his jacket and screamed in his face. It took four nurses to get them separated. Then he directed his anger at me. He screamed at me until he lost his voice, then stormed out and went home. He went that crazy just because we aren't having a girl. He didn't listen to me at all. Maybe if you talk to him, you could calm him down. I'm not going to do that. What? Oh, based on what you're saying, James did nothing wrong. He feels the same way I do. We both want a girl. I tried telling that to the doctor too, but I guess he didn't listen. I've been calling him every day. You have? What do you think he could do? Of course I've been calling him. What good is he if he couldn't make you have a girl? James's reaction was only natural. A hospital is nothing more than a service and we're the customers. Are you insane? I can't believe this. Do you really think the doctor could do anything about me having a boy or a girl? Nonsense. I did my research. Science and medicine have come a long way. Shut your mouth if you don't know what you're talking about. Ugh, another boy. Have you thought about terminating it? Absolutely not. What's going through your head? All right, then I guess we have no other options here. You need to give that baby a sex change. That is the most insane sentence I've ever heard anyone say. Why? People do it all the time. I was born a boy, but in my heart, I'm a girl, blah, blah, blah. Haven't you heard anyone say that? People get surgery for it all the time. We're just going to save time and do it right after he's born. Don't worry, I'll pay for it all. That's what I decided, and my word is final. Understood? Kathy, are you listening? Yeah, I just had to go and throw up. Don't try to fake morning sickness. You're not fooling me. Everyone knows there's no such thing as morning sickness with your second child. It's not morning sickness. What you just said literally made my stomach turn over and made me sick. What do you mean? I've never heard anyone say something so horrible and disgusting as changing a baby's gender the second it's born. Aside from the fact that you've gone and decided that selfishly on your own, do you think there's any doctor on earth who would perform that surgery? Ugh. There's another one of your flaws coming out. You have no idea what the modern world is like. I told James not to marry you. I wish you would have listened. If you don't change that attitude, I'll be forced to take drastic measures. Go ahead. I'm sick of talking to you and listening to your ridiculous and horrific demands. I'm not listening to another word. Kathy, is everything okay? You seem a bit off lately. What do you mean? Yeah, everything's okay, I guess. Why do you ask? What's with all this stuff that just got sent to our house? It's like someone is moving in. Hmm, I don't remember sending you anything. Are you sure it's for us? It's not a package. It's suitcases and boxes. It just showed up. A moving truck showed up and unloaded about 10 boxes and suitcases. They're labeled clothes and furniture. What do you mean? I didn't send anything like that. Huh? You don't know what I'm talking about? I opened one of the boxes, and your clothes and bags and a bunch of other stuff were inside. It looks like it was all just thrown in. None of it is folded. What? That's so strange. I have no idea why that would be sent to your house. Do you have any idea why all of this would be sent here? Is everything going all right with James? Mom, I'm going to come stay with you and Dad, if that's okay. I have off for the next two days. James and I are going through some stuff right now. Of course. No problem. I'm here if you want to talk about what's going on. We'll make sure everything is ready for you when you get here. Hey, Kathy. Did everything make it to your parents' house? I knew you were behind this. No need to repay me for the moving truck. It was my pleasure. Of course, James thought it was a good idea, too. We sent over the divorce papers, too. They'll probably arrive tomorrow. 
Be a good girl and sign them ASAP. Divorce papers? James and I haven't decided on anything regarding a divorce. That's something a husband and wife decide, not the mother-in-law. No need to talk. James has already said that that's what he wants. He told me to text you because he doesn't want to talk to you. Is that so? Isn't he concerned at all about his children? Oh, you mean that little brat and the fetus inside you? He said you can have them. He said he doesn't need them anymore. Don't worry, he agreed to pay child support. Ugh, whatever. I'll sign the papers and bring them down to the courthouse tomorrow afternoon. Ha ha ha, would you look at that? As soon as money comes into the conversation, you agree right away. You are not even trying to hide the fact that you're after his money. I don't care about that money. My dad's right next to me and has been reading this conversation. I'm taking his advice to get rid of that pathetic husband and his wretched mother. Money is an afterthought. Plus, my dad said he'd figure something out in regards to money. Your father said that? As in, your father, the real estate agent, said he'd take care of money. He's never given your James a cent up until now. He said he wanted us to learn the value of a dollar on our own before he helped us out at all. I respected his choice to not give us any handouts. We never needed any help anyway, because I make a good salary at my job. But now if he helps me financially, I won't need any money from you two monsters. Well, isn't that nice? Daddy coming in to save the day, saving you from the evil villains you're making us out to be. That's ironic, since you're the only one who's to blame for all of this. You're the one who just couldn't make my wish come true and have a girl. I've got to ask, why are you so obsessed with me having a girl? Well, isn't it obvious? We'd put her in lessons from a very young age. She'll learn to sing and dance and become a little superstar. Once she gets scouted and becomes famous, she'll thank me by paying for anything I want for the rest of my life. I saw something like that on the news a little while ago. If she has James's genes, she'll be gorgeous. On the other hand, a boy will be completely useless to me. Unbelievable! You only care about how to use the child for your own personal gain. Isn't it natural for a child or grandchild to care for the people in their family? If you don't want any child support, that's fine. Don't come running back to us when daddy runs out of money to give you. Sure, whatever. In return, I want you and James to never contact me or my family ever again. There's nothing I want more than to never ever see you again. We get to cut you out of our lives and we don't need to pay you anything. Oh, what a dream. Well, then there's nothing left to discuss. Have a nice life, you worthless, pathetic woman. <laughs>
He's married now. What is he going to do about his new wife? Well, of course I'll have them get divorced. She's not a good fit at all in this family. That's what I thought. I don't think there's a woman on earth that's a good match for your family. Pardon me? Actually, I'll put it this way. You and your son are not a good match for my daughter. There's absolutely nothing you can say or do to convince me to let Kathy go back. Is that so? Like mother, like daughter, right? Oh, you're both disrespectful. Not to mention you're both good at getting on my nerves. Fine. I'm never going to contact you ever again. Really? Oh, that's great. I don't need a worthless woman who can only have boys. Oh, by the way, we named the baby Ricky. What? Kathy said she wanted me to be the one who named the baby. It took me a while to think of a name, but I really liked Ricky. Once she was born, she really did look like a Ricky. What are you talking about? Wait one second. Yes? Your daughter had a boy, didn't she? Nope. It was a girl. What? You didn't know? Of course not. The doctor said she was having a boy. Oh, that's right. Turns out the first ultrasound didn't get the best view of the baby. After the third checkup, the doctor confirmed she was having a girl. Oh, she's the cutest little girl on earth. She really resembles my daughter. <laughs> I don't believe you. I know you're lying to get on my nerves. I'll have to come over there and see for myself. Do not come anywhere near us. If you really don't believe me, I could send you a picture. Never mind. Not going to happen. We've decided as a family to keep my granddaughter's identity private. There are a lot of crazy people in the world, you being one of them. Did she really have a girl? Yes, she did. Speaking of little Ricky, I have to go pick her up from preschool. Wait a second. Okay. Sandra, please. What? My life these days has been miserable because of my son's new wife. My son doesn't do much for me anymore either. There's a chance they might kick me out of their house. Oh, I was hoping you could welcome me into your family. <laughs> it's not fair. Why do you get to see your grandchildren every day? They're my grandchildren too. Are you trying to become a comedian or something? It's not a joke. I'm being serious. Please, just try and convince Kathy to change her mind. Hmm. Give me a second to think about that. Absolutely not. You'll never be a part of this family, you psychopath. Have you already forgotten what you put my daughter through? Stop! That's all in the past. Water under the bridge. I want to see my grandchildren. You're the one who didn't care about what happened to them. We have no obligation to let you see them. You're such a stupid woman, aren't you? You're so selfish keeping your grandkids all to yourself. You're horrible. How do you expect a woman like me to live on my own if they kick me out of their house? If anything happens to me, it's your fault. You'll be fine. I actually came up with a great idea. What is it? Get a sex change. Science and medicine have come a long way. Shut your mouth. I'm going to block your number if you say stupid things like that. Sandra, are you there? After that, my ex-mother-in-law unexpectedly arrived at my parents' house and caused a huge commotion. We had seen this day coming, which is why we had packed our bags and moved out of our old house two years ago. We felt bad for the poor people who had bought our old house and had to deal with her. My mom filled me in on what she had learned from the neighbors. James and his new wife had finally had enough of her and had thrown her out of their house. She now lives by herself in a dirty and tiny apartment, squandering her money and crying about how awful her life is. Her husband had made a terrible mistake in marrying her. She does not have a job or do anything useful around the house. She has a severe gambling addiction that has put them in a lot of debt. She also sleeps around with every man she can find. My ex-husband works very hard to pay off their bills and to take care of all the household tasks. He changed his number and texted me, pleading me to come back to him, but I ignored him. I would never leave my parents who have been so kind and helpful in raising my children. Our lives are much more peaceful and happy without those two horrible people in them. 